The beginnings of aviation at Port Roge are linked to the Kosselich family and the development of tourism. After World War I, during which all tourism died away, the family resurrected it with ambitious plans. In 1921, in order to attract more people, they bought a used seaplane. It was used for scenic flights for hotel guests. Many people became very fond of flying. Seaplanes allowed people to travel quickly over long distances, so they used them for transfers. The Kosseliches then bought two more seaplanes. In 1922, they established the first private company for commercial flights in Trieste, naming it CISA, which stands for Società Italiana Servizi Aerei. The Gulf of Trieste is often buffeted by north winds, so the Kosseliches decided to erect a tent for the planes in the Leeward Gulf of the Bernardine. Later, they built a wooden garage. When this burned down in 1926, they built a concrete hangar. In addition to tourist and promotional flights, they also trained pilots, serviced the planes and introduced new destinations. Ivan Vidmar, a Slovene pilot, worked at Porto Roj as a flight instructor for CISA for many years. He later became the manager of the seaplane base in Trieste and head of the seaplane base at Porto Roj. The CISA company was in operation here until 1934 when at Mussolini's demand, it merged with Italian National Aviation. Despite its new name, the company continued its activities undisturbed until 1941, when the last generation of military pilots completed training. On the 1st of April, 1926, the first regularly scheduled flight of Italian airlines from Porto Roj to Turin took off, stopping in Venice and Pavia. After World War II, tourism in Porto Roj and Peran slowly recovered. The idea of building an airport on the coast was not new. Several possible locations were considered. Sicholie, Skocianski Zatok near Koper, and Czerny Kal. Due to the relief, weather, and for economic and political reasons, they chose to build the airport in the Sicholia Valley. In the early 60s, the terrain for a takeoff runway was prepared. Members of the Postoina Aero Club made an important contribution. <laughs> gospodarstva in politike smo potem šli v organizacijo aerokluba Koper in kasneje tudi za letalce, ki bi radi leteli v Solinah in smo začeli leta 60 že aktivno delovati v tem smislu, da dobi obala svoje letališče. In 1962, Drago Gabriel drew his first sketch of the area where the airport was eventually built. Using his sketches, several aviation commissions of the Federal Civil Aviation Authorities from Belgrade started considering the runway terrain. On the 27th of September that year, the Aviation Commission from Zagreb recommended temporary registration as a secondary sports airport for aircraft up to 3,000 kilograms. Two weeks later, the Civil Aviation Authorities of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia confirmed that Porto Roj Airport had been officially registered. The first official landing on an unfinished grass runway was on August the 22nd, 1962, when Drago Gabriel landed an Aero 2575. <laughs> Bilo je pa zvezda tim motorjem, pet cilindrov je bilo ali pa pet valjev bi lahko rekli in bo zelo sigurno in to je bil paradni konj takratne letalske zveze in stoh aeroklubov, ki so ga lahko koristili. 
In 1962, Portoroge Airport reached a new milestone as the Aeronautical Association of Yugoslavia and Slovenia decided that the competition for the third Adriatic Aeronautical Cup would be held there. The preparation of the grass and the runway were done by Pavle Zamar and other members of the first aeronautical club on the coast. They'd already established a 1,200-meter runway for the competitions. The airport opened with an aircraft meeting on October the 14th, 1963. Aeronautical clubs from all over Slovenia attended, as well as delegates from other Yugoslav republics. 26 planes were entered in the competition. The event was attended by nearly 5,000 spectators. The third Adriatic Aeronautical Cup in 1963, sponsored by the Union of Slovene Aircraft Associations and the Portoroj Aeroclub, had 86 participants from 16 countries. The first prize went to Czechoslovakia, while the women's first prize went to the USA. The best competitor from the former Yugoslavia was Marian Maric, ranked 17th. The third Adriatic Skydiving Cup was special as it introduced a new discipline, attraction jumps for the Portoroj Tourist Prize. The winning team was from the USA. The Portoroj Tourist Association also introduced panoramic flights over the Slovene coast. The Adriatic Skydiving Cup at Portoroj then turned into a biennial competitive event. In 1975, the first European Skydiving Cup was organized. It was attended by more than 100 competitors. Many Istrians love to watch skydiving competitions. N.A. Pavlovich's grandfather used to tell stories about them. He used to help skydivers to pack their parachutes. Among other things, this is what he told his grandson. Da se tekmovali več različnih držav in da so da so bila padala drugačna, so bila okrogla ne pravokotna kot zdaj in so bila manjša. In so se rabili spustiti v velik peskovnik in tam pristat. Kašen krat pa je jih je veter tudi odnesel v sosednje soline na polje. Na koncu pa, ko so končali, so pa dobili vsak različne značke, ki so si jih zelo veseli. In 1971, the municipality of Peran approved the construction of an international sports airport at Porto Roj. In July that year, a building permit was issued for a 700-meter multi-purpose runway, 20 meters wide. The asphalt coating was financed by the Portoroz Association for the promotion of tourism. Two years later, the Federal Civil Aviation Authorities issued a written order of registration and a permit for the use of the airport. In the 70s, the runway was widened and lengthened. Part of the main building, a hangar and a platform were erected. The airport soon received a technical attestation for the widened runway, 850 meters long and 28 meters wide, for the apron and for the first part of the building. It was financed by the basic organization of associated labor of Portoroj Casino. The importance of casino manager Anton Spinelli should not be forgotten. His efforts were important for the development of the local economy, infrastructure, tourism, sports, educational and social systems in the municipality of Piran. Many people say he prevented thoughtless building in Piran and Porto Roj. In 1978, the renovated airport was opened, registered and put on the list of airports suitable for panoramic flights. The opening was a huge boost to coastal tourism and the local economy. The following year, a single-engine Cessna 172 sports aircraft was purchased. There were various flight schools at the airport. The Coastal Aviation Center has the longest history. It used to be called the Portoroj Aero Club. Benjamin Licher, pilot and flight instructor, pointed out the importance of participating in the system for protection and rescue. They've been part of it since 1979. 
odkrili smo ogromno nesnažen, za katere je bila potrebna intervencija, kar je pa naš največji uspeh, da smo v vsem tem času rešili pet življenj, torej tri surfarje in dva brodolomca, ki so še dane živi. In 1980, Portoroj Aerodrome received a license from the Federal Committee for Transport and Communications in Category D for national and international public transport. It was a very important turning point. On June the 2nd, the airport of Portoroj went international. That same year, an aviation fuel service was built. Also, a memorial plaque was erected to the pilots of the 1st and 2nd Squadron of the National Liberation Army of Yugoslavia, who were killed in World War II. In May 1981, a turbo commander plane landed at Porto Roj. It brought nine passengers from the German city of Passau. It was an important event, since it was the first time that so many passengers had landed at the same time. In that same year, an annex to the airport terminal was built. The control tower, rooms for monitoring weather, a border crossing and a visitor information center were built. The control center guarantees safety and accuracy at the airport and in the surroundings. Natasha Filimonovic is now head of the control unit. V obdobju povečanega obsega zračnega prometa mu pa zraben pomaga še kontrolarski stent, ki skrbi za koordinacijo in vse v zvezi z načrti poleta z sosednjimi kontrolami zračnega prometa. Mi pa mejimo na pulsko priletno kontrolo, priletno kontrolo ronki, dele džonari, sosednje letališče in na Ljubljansko, ki se odvija iz centra na Brniku. In the early 80s, the Yacht Taxi Transit Service began to operate here. They used Cessna 402B aircraft with eight passenger seats. They were able to fly in all weather conditions and even land at small sports airports. These aircraft could travel to the closest European cities. That same year, a Canadian-built Dash 7 landed at the airport. It could carry up to 50 passengers. Branko Sosnik is a flight instructor at the Lipitsan Air School. As an experienced pilot, he's worked at the airport since 1978. Between 1991 and 1997, he was general manager there. Nahajamo se simulator letenja, to pomeni v napravi, v kateri potem simuliramo letenje po navigacijih si sredstvih, a pa po pristajanju, kakšen po instrumentih. Uporabljamo za nadaljno šolanje, to pomeni za instrumentalno letenje. Instrumentalno letenje na enomotorcih, več motorcih, ali pa potem tudi za MCC, to pomeni multi-crook operation. For safety reasons, in cases when large aircraft landed here, the runway was extended in 1984 to 1200 meters and widened to 30 meters. That year the airport was officially registered for passenger traffic with Dash 7 aircraft. Soon after that, at the initiative of a British tourist agency, which wished to offer holidays on the coast of Montenegro, a scheduled service line with Dash 7s was added. At first, scheduled service planes flew from Portoroj to Tivat. Since planes flew over Belgrade, a stop in the Serbian capital was also introduced. The regional meteorological center, managed by Luciano Grozic, has a dual function. Apart from providing service for the airport, the registry serves as a reference weather station. Tudi smo nekje v petih in pol že, da pripravimo podatke, za da prvo depešo ob šestih, kaj gre v mednarodno izmenjavo, takrat bi še za potrebe sinoptike, klimatologije in klasične meteorologije na sploh, ne? Ob osmih, ko se letališče tudi odpre, takrat je tudi bolj povdarek pa na potrebe pilotov. Because of scheduled services and favorable weather, Air traffic at Sacholi increased in 1985. We had almost 7,200 arrivals. The airport also offered some 1,300 panoramic flights. The company balance sheets were proof enough that our infrastructural plans were well founded. Even the employees try to live in harmony with the locals and the environment. 
Robert Kreintz, general manager of the Port of Roj Aerodrome since 2008, emphasized that cooperation with the local residents is exceptional. We in the front were the organizers of some kind of good actions, here in the main school, which is located in Vsečovle, in the Svetem Petru, in the community, and it's easy to say that we are very close to all the activities that are developed on this way, from state priorities to all the other activities that are connected to the Otroci, who are the regular observers of our flights, and we are happy to be satisfied with some new knowledge. We are working with Orlina for a lot of good. It's amazing that the deployed passengers, I don't know, from the hard work that they start, da hočejo prikazati, da smo mi v konfliktu s Solinami oziroma Soline z nami. To lahko odločno zanikam in naj povem, da tudi v faza poplav in podobnih naravnih katastrof, lahko rečem, da smo tudi mi Solinam zelo veliko pripomogli, namreč, ko se delajo določeni nasipi, zaščite, da se ta kulturna dediščina ohrani, se težka mehanizacija, material, ki se vozi za ustvarjanje teh nasipov, vse to se vozi preko letališča, znotraj letališča in tukaj lahko rečem, da delamo z roko v roki tudi s Solinami. In the 1980s, a hangar for airport technical services and a fire station were built at the same time. Soon after that, the landing infrastructure was completed. During the same period, new plans were made to further extend the runway. It became clear that it was too short for fully operational flights. In 1989, an illumination system for the runway and nearby obstacles was installed for use at night. Yat opened a new scheduled service to Belgrade using ATR-42 planes. That same year, the Federal Committee for Transport and Communications issued a license for night operations as well as for traffic with aircraft with a capacity of up to 27 tonnes. In 2008, some members of the Coastal Aviation Center decided to start their own enterprise and founded a new club, the Porto Roj Aero Club. Its current president is Dragiša Djordjevic. We knew there were more opportunities for training and we decided to make a new club and a new training structure. We have pilots who are old 17 years old, our students are the oldest and the oldest do 63 let. Celo en pilot, naš instruktor, ima 72 let. Slovene independence meant a new and difficult start. In 1991, the casino run by the Portoroz Tourist Enterprise decided to register as a limited liability company and named it the Portoroz Aerodrome Enterprise. The company was then restructured as a public company and ownership passed to the municipality of Piran. The airport was mostly promoted with the help of regular clients. New charter flights were established using Dash 7s and 8s, which transported passengers from Austria to Porto Roj and from there to other tourist destinations nearby. Attractive prices stimulated an interest in piloting courses. From 1991 to 1997, there were four flying schools there. In the peak season, there were up to 400 operations per day, which meant that planes were landing or taking off every two minutes. The airport predominantly hosts general aviation pilots. Most planes are small and flown by so-called weekend pilots. Rudy Kolenz, the shift manager, constantly stresses safety. manj spretnosti in zato moramo biti še posebej pozorni. Ker je letališče na takem mestu in ima stezo tako postavljeno, da je vpliv vetra precejšen, posebej burje, ki je popolnoma prečna, v času, ko piha močnejša burja, moramo biti takrat močno pozorni. Zato vprašamo kontrolorija takrat, kakšen je veter, ko nam najavi letalo, kakšnega tipa je letalo, ker potem nam to še poveča pozornost, ker manjše kot je letalo, bolj je občutljivo. In 1992 there was an interesting event. An American F-16 had to make an emergency landing when the engine partly stalled. 
the American rescue team lifted the plane with a transport helicopter and then drove it back to the army base at Aviano. In the late 80s and early 90s, several important political guests came here. The last Yugoslav president, Ante Markovic, landed here. The Italian premier, Giulio Andriotti, came as well. There was also a meeting of eight European prime ministers who were invited here by the Slovene president, Milan Kuchin. It was in June 1997 at Piran. The heads of state were able to exchange views on the challenges and opportunities facing their administrations. The discussion focused on states as national or civic entities, the possibilities for a common European future. The main ceremony was held in Tartini Square. After that, the presidents went sightseeing around Piran. Benjamin Licher, instructor and stunt pilot, recalls a flying event organized by the Coastal Aviation Center in 1995. It was the first time that the legendary Italian military acrobatic demonstration team, Frecci Tricolori, had appeared here. Lahko rečem, da to je bila ena letalska prijaditev, ki niti prej ali niti kasnej, niti v bivši Jugoslaviji, niti potem Sloveniji jo ni bilo. Vesnično velika prijaditev, ki je tudi ogromno doprinesla k kasnejšemu razvoju in tudi promociji samega letališča. In 2004, the aerodrome organized the so-called Aviatica, a general aviation fair. Visitors were able to see various types of passenger, military and aerobatic planes and to enjoy additional events. In the same year, the airfield was sold to private owners. In July, the new owners, the municipality of Piran, Ljubljana Airport, Istra Benz, the Port of Corpa and the Corpa Road Enterprise help with the new investments. During the next two years, Sacholi was regulated and a new asphalt layer was added, improving airfield operations. The takeoff and landing strips were repaired, tire marks were removed, and the existing runway was recovered. The modernization of work surfaces at Sacholi guaranteed additional safety. The system enabling flying in conditions of low visibility and at night was also modernized. Before pilots set off on their course, they are well advised to check the weather information at the regional meteorological center. Namely, being well prepared is close to getting the job done. Odvisno kakšen let ima, ne, ima vizualni, ne, torej to pač brez instrumentov ali instrumentalni, ne. In teda pač damo vse podatke, kar imamo na razpolago, vetrovnih razmer, prognoz, stanje na letališčih v poti, ne, recimo do Monaka, je kar en kup letališče, Ronki, Milano, in Genova in tako dalje, ne, tako da se on že ustvarja eno sliko, kaj ga čaka na poti, ne. Ko enako pa rabijo tudi tisti uporabniki naših storitev, ki prihajajo v Portoroš, ne, pa glih tako, recimo v Monaku, pogledajo, vidijo situacijo v Portoroš, vsake pol ure pošljemo depešo, tudi na enem drugem letališču si tamo gledajo, kakšna je stanje, vidijo, če so vremenske razmere v redu, glih tako dobijo vse podatke do Portoroža, priletijo sem. In September 2006, an informal session of the NATO Defence Secretaries was held at Porto Roche. The aerodrome was used for logistic and safety purposes and became a military site for a couple of days. In 2009, for the first time in 10 years, the airfield was again used for parachuting. It was done to attract freefall buffs as well as visitors. The Portoroge Aerodrome aims to present skydiving to as many people as possible. Paranoia, a skydiving school, executed jumps at the airfield. They mostly support tandem jumps since the usual sports school skydiving at this airport is too demanding. Some 1,000 parachutists have made their first jumps here. About 100 got their licenses as well. The school is proud to have some of their students become members of the Slovene national team. Some have even won prizes at national skydiving competitions. The local people live with the aerodrome, which is important. Nelly, Alma and Jeritza, who've been living in the vicinity for a long time, 
have also followed activities at the airfield. First association has been free for me. I'm afraid of it, because I'm sure that the birds are free as much as the birds are free. The birds are easy to go where they want to go, and the Czech are free. I remember when I was a little bit older, 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 I was a little bit older. In je bilo enkratno videti soline, zato ker so se vrtele veternice, slišal si zvok galjebov in tudi padala, kako so dol letela. Letališče mi je všeč tukaj, tudi moram reči, da me nikoli ni motilo. Imam to srečo, da lepo spim lahko, da se to odmaknem iz mojih misli, če leti, pač leti, jaz ga ne slišim. Sem za podaljšano pisto letalsko stazo. Sem pa tudi zelo, kako bi rekla, zaljubljena v naše soline. In jaz upam, če bo prišlo enkrat do tega, da se bo tudi recimo upoštevalo, da ne bo recimo prišla kakšna večja škoda. Naše soline to so res enkratne in to je naša kulturna deviščina, jo moramo čuvati še naprej. In 2009, the Aerodrome organized an open door day. During this event, they wanted to present their activities to the locals and to anyone else who was interested, and also show the potential of aviation for the municipality. There were also numerous side events. Visitors could enjoy exciting and daring feats by the acrobatic pilots Benjamin Litier and Tomo Polianets, as well as members of the Paranoia Skydiving School. And visitors learned about various airport services. Customs officers showed how they used dogs for detection. Firemen presented their vehicles and equipment. Policemen presented the helicopter they use when controlling road traffic and state borders. There was also time to educate the visitors. They could watch the replica of the Edda 5 plane piloted by Tomasz Meze. See 19th century clothes worn by members of the Ambot Club from Piran and Srechko Gombach's exhibition of the history of aviation. The Eta 5 was one of the best planes designed by the Rusian brothers, pioneers of Slovene aviation. Edvard Rusian first flew it in March 1910. A descendant of the brothers, Grazia Rusian, was also present at the event. Numerous visitors were glad to see Anton Spinelli, who played an important role in the growth of the airfield and other enterprises in the municipality of Piran. His efforts and merits in this region earned him the title of honorary citizen of Piran, presented to him by the mayor of Piran, Tomasz Gantar. He was the first to receive this flattering title. Rudy Kolenz, shift manager, often met with Mr. Spinelli. He stressed Spinelli's role in the development of the airfield. Vsakič, ko je šlo za kakršen koli razvoj na daljni korak pri letališču, je vedno poskrbel, da je bilo to možno. Poznal je delo, večkrat se je tukaj v glasu, znal je do delovcev pristopiti. Vsi smo bili zelo veseli, ko je prišel na dan odprtih vrat. Za mene je to ogromno pomenilo, ker sem, bom rekel, od malih nog poznal to letališče. Spomnim se prvih jadranskih pokalov, padalskih, ko sem jih spremljal kot otrok. Tukaj mislim, da prvega, da sem bil prav na letališču, je bilo leta 75. Takrat nisem vedel, kdo za tem stoji, kasneje pa sem videl v 80-ih pozdnih in to, da je to vse gospod spinelj. In 2010, the Porta Roj Aerodrome reintroduced the line with Belgrade after 20 years. There were two more important events that year. The Slovene government decided to commission a regional plan for Porto Roj Aerodrome. That summer, we witnessed the second Open Door Day. On May the 27th, the Slovene government decided to commission a regional plan for the aerodrome. This was very important. It will enable us to extend the takeoff and landing strips. According to Robert Kreinz, manager of the aerodrome, it will be essential for its future development. The present length of the airstrip causes numerous restrictions with regard to safety, order and undisturbed traffic. Extending the airstrip by some 200 meters, its total length would be 1400 meters. By a further 140 meters at the cross point of Sucholje, 
and by 60 meters towards the Danica channel. This would be the basis for long-term solutions. The Sobot, 19 June, was Aerodrome Portoroš, Aero Club in Obalni Letarski Center Portoroš, was on a day of the first door. This time too, the visitors did not remain indifferent. The parachutists were the first to show their bravery. Experienced sports pilots then showed their mastery both on solid ground and in the air. Policemen showed how dogs can help them catch criminals. There was also a demonstration of ultralight planes in flight and an American army plane that came over from Aviano. Charity events and culinary feasts were provided as well. The peak of the event was the distribution of prizes. Tomáš Ganta, the mayor of Piran at the time, presented the manager of the aerodrome with an award on the 50th anniversary of his successful work in aviation, thus stimulating promotion and local tourist services. Mr. Kreintz knows the meaning of the history of aviation in the region of Sicholje, Porto Roj and Piran. He's convinced of its growing importance and potential for development. Ne na zadnje, če izpostavimo, smo bili omenjeni tudi v Štrasburu na predstavitvi naše komisarke za promet, kjer je prav Portoroško letališče izpostavljeno tudi skozi svojo zgodovino, pomen, ker pač se le nahajamo v območju, ki bi lahko pokrivalo širši segment za zagotovitev pridobivanja potnikov, tako v prihodu kot v odhodu, tudi hrvaški del, del Italije, širšega regijskega pomena. Žal pa se moram tu spet navezati na državo, ki je prepočasna no, pri našem razvoju. At the beginning of 2011, a charter line with Rome was set up at Sicholje. The new line provides new possibilities of development for tourism in the municipality of Piran. In May, a VOR navigation system was installed. The instrument uses radio waves and the transmitter in the cockpit of the plane that directs pilots until they've landed safely. This was an important acquisition as the instruments enable flying in bad weather and when visibility is poor. The flight controller has a responsible position. He or she directs pilots and passengers until they land safely. Natasha Filimonovic, head of airport control, knows what character traits flight controllers need. Kontrolori morajo imeti pa take posebne lastnosti, se pravi, morajo biti sposobni hitrega odločanja, prevzemanja odgovornosti, delanja več opravil na enkrat, kar moraš govoriti s piloti po telefonu, z letališko, službo, z vodjo izmene z asistentom, pa še kaj bi se našlo. Many well-known people have visited the airport in the past, such as Princess Yelisa Veta, a descendant of the Karadjordjevic dynasty, Ralf Schumacher, Formula One driver, Franz Beckenbauer, one of the all-time top football players, and the current top tennis champion, Novak Djokovic. In the summer of 2013, Mateusz Lenarczyk landed here. He's performed exceptional feats as a pilot. He flew around the Earth for the second time with a Pipistrel ultralight plane, which earned him the title of best pilot in the world. He came here after his second flight over the North Pole. A national promotional spot called I Feel Slovenia was filmed here, which featured the Slovene skiing champion Tina Maze, winner of two Olympic gold medals. Even when pilots are well prepared, unforeseen incidents can happen, which is why it's important that they remain calm. Branko Sosnik, pilot and flying instructor, says the most critical incident is when the engine stalls. Kar drugega, na primer, če bi odpove tudi alternator kaj podobnega tamanjših letalih, ali pa kakaj generatori pomeni, da smo pač brez elektrike kaj tako, ampak to še vedno leti letalo. In če pa motor gre, potem pa to pomeni, da ti se srstane in da mu stane še pač drsni let ali pa jadranje. V to košolanje se tudi to naučijo, tako da jim kjerkoli na določih mesti pač odzajmemo tisti gaz, kar pomeni moč in potem nekako jadrajo nazaj do letališča, v primeru, če se leti recimo kolice letališča, šol se krog. Ali pa kje drugi na nek teren, v fazi šolanja, že od začetka za športnega pilota ali pa za osebnega, ko pravijo, to mora vlada. 
In 2014, a meeting of Slovene pilots was held at the aerodrome to honor the day of women aviators. Their association, called the Slovene Women's Pilots Club, was founded at Portoroz in 1988. The club linked various kinds of sports flyers, for example, gliders, power plane pilots, and parachutists. The membership includes 35 women and one man. They meet during the year to talk about their experiences. They organize events and represent women pilots. The pilot Dragosha Djordjevic says that women are important for the Aero Club. Do prvog samostalnog leta se pride po programu 12-12 pa po ure letenja. Glede na to da je to izredno naporan proces usposabljanja za kandidata, u začetku se ne more več kot po ure do podne i po ure po podne leteti, to je potrebno nekje okoli 15 do 20 dni. Popreče je nekje šest mesecov da bi pilot uspeo narediti licencu športnega pilota. The aerodrome staff do their best to satisfy clients. Valentina Tsigale sees to coordination, promotion and contacts with business partners. Največ sodelujem s našimi sodelovkami, ki upravljajo delo zemljskih stavrte. Sone so največ v kontaktu z našimi gosti. Moram reči, da smo v letalskem svetu zelo poznani tudi po tem, bom rekla, prijaznem načinu sprijemene naših strank. Se najdejo tudi kakšni posebni gosti, ki želijo kakšno storitev, ki je ni možno izvesti, ampak mi se potrudimo po najboljših močeh. Kakšni vip gosti zahtevajo kakšen avtomobil, ki ga pač v Sloveniji sploh nimamo, ampak potem si nekako pomagamo in recimo Pred kratkim smo naročili en poseben avtomobil iz pač sosedne države, ki ga je pričakal tukaj na letališču. Since Portoroz Aerodrome was founded, its administrators have always worked closely with the municipality of Piran. Peter Bosman, the mayor of Piran, said that the airfield is a strategic trump card of tourist promotion. According to him, the runway urgently needs to be extended. This will give the aerodrome new chances for development. The leading man of the municipality of Peran said that the problem lies not in protecting the environment, but in lengthy bureaucratic procedures. Več kako v naše države rabimo soglasje, rabimo sestanke, sestakujemo večkrat in včasi te sestanke so brez cilja. In jaz mislim, da vsa ta leta, jaz zdaj sem župan štiri leta, prizadevamo da bi državne poskosne načrti, ki je osnova za podašnje steze, bi bilo sprijet. Nažalost, se vedno svečujemo iz burokracijo. Upam in tudi imam signale, da bo v vdoče drugače in da bomo resnično v Evropo eno leto ali največ dve leti prišlo do podašnja steze. Mislim, da je država vzela preveč pristojnosti glede razvoje občine. Ne bi bilo slabo, da Jeritsa Makoric, who resides in the area, is proud to have the aerodrome close to home. To her, aviation can help with the development of tourism. She says the main problem is a lack of vision. Zdaj je pri nas vsak vleče na svoje strane. Jaz mislim, če bi se zbrali skupaj in naredili eno skupno vizijo, prišli recimo tudi do tega spoznanja, koliko je pomembno tudi letališče samo za občo na Piran in sploh za turizem, jaz mislim, da bi mi naredili en velik korak naprej. Letališče samo kot prvo, potem turistični delovci, hotelirji, občina Piran zraven. To bi se morali zbrati, narediti en skupni cilj, se zmeniti, kaj je dobro, kaj treba narediti, da bomo mi razvijali ta turizem in potem na tem delati. Robert Kreintz says their plans for the future are ambitious. They plan to erect new hangars, enlarge the airport platform and extend the runway by 200 meters. 
Če bi mi to širitev naredili, dobimo nova delovna mesta, novo dodano vrednost in rekel bom tako, 1200 metrov oziroma 1400 metrov, ki je predviden iznotraj državnega prostorskega načrta, te prepelje po celi Evropi. Cesta 1400 metrov pa te prepelje samo 1400 metrov. Hočem reči, letelišče je okno v svet in če se ne bo razvijala tako kot naj bi se, potem kakšna bo vsoda v prihodnje pa težko napoved. The history of aviation on the Slovenian coast developed in parallel to global trends in aviation, and at the beginning it even surpassed them. From seaplanes in the early beginnings and the first commercial lines to the development of general aviation, air transport in coastal towns has been important for tourism. Effective promotion of cultural heritage and an efficient national strategy may give Porto Roj Aerodrome every possibility of becoming important in Central Europe. Many will wish to fly over the sea.